Hello, is Nikki. How you doing? Oh, blimey. Here we go. Is my phone set up? Okay, let's just take this guy out. That's it. I forgot to put some slap on. Oh well, this is my this is my bare face. This is no makeup. This is uh two children who tonight were like, yeah. My four-year-old was like, I don't really want to go to bed. Well, well, my friend, you are. Okay. It's going to be a slightly shorter one tonight because I'm speaking to a client at eight o'clock. So um, what do I want to talk about? I want to get straight into some juicy stuff. And I want to talk about a podcast that I recorded a little way back. Let me just see if I can find the number so you can find it as I'm talking to you about it. Um maybe, uh, I'm not sure where it might be. Okay, so basically what I'm talking about is how you can support the version of you who doesn't want to do it, the version of you who doesn't want to go visible, the version of you who's tired, the version of you who is stuck in comparing yourself to other people on the internet, the version of you who is just procrastinating and trying to tell yourself there's going to be a better time, there's going to be a better day, when you have more money, when there's just going to be, we can fill our head with so many excuses. And sometimes some of those things are the way we feel about stuff kind of comes to us based on what other people are telling me. So I, um, motherhood, for example, is a is a prime example. Yes, of course, there are some tough, stretchy days when nobody's really slept enough and the house is a tip and everybody's a bit grouchy and you've got to do stuff, you've got to do other life admin stuff and part of you just wants to kind of curl up in bed and like not do very much that day, but you can't, you've got to get, you know, keep on keeping on as it were. Um, and sometimes those days we just kind of stay home or we go local to the park or we go to the fruit and veg shop or we go to the supermarket like it's a really kind of casual day and there are other times where somebody might say you sound busy or I can't believe that you're doing that or you're so inspiring or you're whatever and you know we're all figuring out hello hello we're figuring out our own version of how to do stuff. Now, if I had to go and work in a factory and work nights, um, and I am not a night person in the slightest, I would find that really hard. I would find that really challenging. That would feel like hard work for me. And for the most part, I'm like, why would I even complain about this stuff? Hello, hello. Why would I complain? Because I love what I do. And I know so many people out there really don't. And um, so, yeah, I'm not going to whinge about it for sure. Okay, so in terms of visibility, some of the things that I can share with you that might be useful. So when we're thinking about visibility, getting your brand, getting your business out there, all that good stuff, focus on, and I know it sounds so obvious, but focus on the stuff that works. Focus on the stuff that you feel really drawn to you know it's that moment where you open the quality streets or you open the box of heroes or whatever like there's going to be one that's like your go-to one twix every time is that heroes or the other one i can't remember it's not quality streets but yeah i'm like twix thank you cream egg next yeah let's get into that as well that's what it's like with visibility so go where you're drawn if it's writing right. If you want to do funny Instagram stories, brilliant. If you want to dip your toe for a little while, but show up on Instagram a little bit more by commenting on other people, do that. And I think sometimes that pressure to be everywhere, doing all of the things just holds us stuck and it doesn't make us want to do anything. And it can just be really stifling because then you might see, and somebody said this to me the other day and hopefully they met it in a nice way, but they were like, oh my God, you're everywhere. You've got like a podcast, you've got this, you've got a, that, da, 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 da. Yeah, I have because I've been doing it for years and years and years. And 
this has been a real turning point for me in terms of I've been doing this nearly 10 years. So I've really noticed where I guess how I can make it work for me and where I can build that momentum and I can get that ease and flow. But believe me, there have been times sometimes where, hello, hello, where I've tried stuff, I've experimented stuff, I've started something and then immediately have gone, this is not a good idea. This does not feel good. This doesn't feel aligned. I'm not getting results. Why am I wasting my time doing that? And that's not me just kind of giving up willy nilly. That's me going, hmm, that took a lot of time and effort and there wasn't a return on investment or not even a money kind of uh, way of tracking it. Like nobody connected with it, nobody engaged with it, nobody was bothered. And, you know, our time is precious. So I think it's really important to kind of go where you feel like you you need to. Another thing I want to talk about tonight is batching. And I never, ever used to do this because for some reason, I sort of felt like it was cheating. It, it Maybe it was going back to my performance background. Like I love doing live stuff. I love doing live speaking. I love interactions like this. I, I like to be on it in the moment. And the thing is, I can't always do that at the time that I want to do it. So naturally, I'm a morning person. And if I had it my way, and maybe this is a limiting belief, but, you know, I'm working with other people here, I would get up at kind of 5.30. I would have a bit of time to myself. I'd maybe do, I don't know, a bit of yoga. I might go for a run if I was feeling energized. I'm not at the moment because my little one is still quite little and awake in the night. Um, I'd go for a run. I'd come back. I'd have a really good breakfast. Notice this is all in silence before anybody else has woken up in my house. And then... I might get dressed and kind of good and sorted for the day. And if I was doing a live, I'd quite like to do it 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock, get it done for the day, crack on, see my clients, go to my meetings, do what I need to do, and then kind of be done by about 4 in the afternoon. Like, I've done, I'm going to have a lovely um, evening, I'm going to go for a walk on the heath or wh wherever I want to go and have that sort of like downtime, have a really nice bath, read. But you know, I've got two children, <laughs> both under four, like that rhythm doesn't necessarily work for me. So as soon as I figured that out, and it took a while, because I was like, why am I not doing the things that I want to do? It was because I was waiting for that inspiration. It was because I was allowing myself to kind of wait until I felt ready or well, wait until I had two hours to really think about stuff and to piece it all together. It's not happening at the moment. I just can't, I can't do it. Limiting belief perhaps again, but it's not practical and feasible with my lifestyle. But what I can say is if you can get into the rhythm of batching and when you're doing something and get in that headspace of being on a roll, it's just going to change your business. It's going to change your brand and the way that you operate. It's almost like that moment. And you have to also know when to quit while you're ahead. You know, when you open a drawer in your kitchen and it might be that awful one with the batteries and the random chopsticks and the lighters and the candles and the rest of the shit, basically, that gets shoved in there because nobody else knows what to do with it. Um, I'm just going to plug in my phone, by the way. I'm just really conscious that um, my battery is going to go. Okay, is that sorted? Just give me one sec. Let me just test that. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, I've flipped it around, but hopefully it's fine. Um, so the batching thing, you might be in your kitchen and you're like, yes, I've done that drawer. I've sorted. Where next? What can I sort? And you're on a roll in that way. And I kind of get like that sometimes when I'm making videos or if I'm writing or if I'm editing a podcast, I might be like, right, OK, because I always do the first cut. Um, it's kind of like a thing that I always say to my guests that I want to feel that I want them to kind of feel protected and looked after in in that instance, because, um, yeah, before it kind of goes somewhere else, I want to have creative control, basically, of what the thing is and make sure the guest is happy. Anyway, that's another story. Um, so I get on a roll with it. And there's and it's really lovely 
that sometimes in an hour, I can do seven, maybe eight IGTVs. Sometimes I change my top if I'm feeling a bit wild. And like, I'm done. And then that is an hour of stuff. I don't usually have to edit them that much because I've honed the skill, debatable, but for the most part, like they feel kind of easy to do and they feel okay. And then what I can do is just release them as the week goes on or however I want to have them. And that is a really great way of me showing up consistently. And that is sort of the battle of it, really. It's are you doing something consistently? Are you feeding it regularly? So if it was a plant, you wouldn't want to just go, right, I'm just going to douse it in water. I I need to give it some love immediately. Right, I'm going to change the pot. I'm going to shove it in the window and I'm going to hope for the best. No, it's much more nuanced than that, especially with plants. Like you've got to water them every day, check in, see what's happening, have a moment, you know, all the things. But I've really realized that and the power of doing that. So again, going back to it, so I'm just grabbing my big old tea. Going back to it, the power of that batching. Somebody might go, bloody hell, how's she doing all this content? And like, where does she find her time in her day? And, you know, people have all these preconceived ideas because people say it to me. People DM me, like, how are you doing this? Or what? what's your secret? It's batching for the most part. And again, sometimes it can feel, I've wrestled with it slightly. You feel like you're skipping the work or you're feeling like you're not doing the hot off the press type situation. But for the most part, my lifestyle doesn't allow me to do the hot off the press moment because no doubt I'll have a child saying, mommy, I need a, you know, can you get me this? Or I want some Weetabix or I can't find whatever or my baba needs feeding, you know, it's all kinds of things in that way. So really considering what is your version of batching. Now to backtrack with this and sort of preparing for the window of opportunity that you have, I like to create containers where I can capture my ideas. And what I mean by this, hello if you're joining, what I mean by this is my ideas come thick and fast when I'm least expecting them. For example, when I'm driving or when I'm out and about or when I turn on the telly and I hear the news and I suddenly get an idea or I'll be watching the chase with my son and uh, there'll be a historical question and it will trigger an old memory or an old story or whatever it might be. They come in all kinds of crazy ways. Yes, sometimes they come when I sit down with a big piece of paper and a pen sitting at my desk. But usually the juicy ones are when I'm doing something else. But what I have to have learned now, especially if I'm cooking dinner or if I'm with my kids or whatever, I can't do that Uncle Quentin thing, you know, from the famous five where he'd suddenly just disappear into his study. Nobody knew and he just wouldn't come out because he'd come up with a new invention. I can't do that and I don't want to do that. However, I have different note sections on my phone and I have loads of notebooks and pens and paper all around all the time. So if something comes, even if it's just a little seedling of something um, and it's not something that I, I don't quite know what the full expression of it is going to be yet, that's okay. And in fact, that's going to... um that's the sort of beauty of it, I guess, because sometimes I can write down the idea, leave it for a couple of days. And by the time I come back to it, it's fully formed. And I sit down and I just write the whole thing and it comes out in that way. So the best thing I can suggest in this way is, are you creating these containers for best reference ever? Yes, Uncle Quentin. I know I can't, that literally just came to me. What's happening on this? Is it Wednesday? No, it's Thursday. Wednesdays and Thursdays always getting mixed up. I feel like my work's done now. I'm not going to be able to say anything else. Okay, so um, supporting yourself to do what you need to do. So likewise, if I come up with loads of those, um, quite often I'll do them in my grid of like, uh, like the thing I said today was, are you the Chandler Bing 
of your friendship group, meaning like, do people know what you do? If I've got loads of those catchy phrases, I've got a lovely place in my notes and I've probably got a notebook as well of things I scribble down. So if I make one of those graphics or if I'm bringing somebody on to to work and create graphics for me, then it's a really great use of their time. So you can kind of not knock them out because, again, that sounds just a bit blasé about it. But you can work really effectively, save them on your phone and then do it when you need to. And actually, I don't necessarily write all those captions at the same time. Sometimes what's happening on that day, it will bring a new flavor to it. It will bring a new um, nuance or a new excitement or a new energy to it. And that's when it feels really fresh as well. Um, Another thing I would say is know when you don't need to be visible. Know when you need to pull back, when you need to close your phone, when you need to close your eyes. I was going to say close your legs, I don't mean that. Um, When you just need to close down and you need to shut up shop for a while and not be available to anybody. Having boundaries in your visibility is absolutely fine as well. In fact, it's really essential. So one example that this comes up with is with my personal brand, I am always sharing stories and anecdotes. And for me, it's important to show up speaking my truth. Now, does that mean I'm going to air all of my public, public, um, dirty washing in public? No, it means, hello, hello. It means that I can carefully curate what I want to say. So if I've had a big old row with my partner or I've had a really long stressful day or I've been pitching back and forth and it's looking really positive and then at the last minute I don't get the thing or it doesn't go my way or I have an acting audition and they keep me hanging and then it doesn't work out, etc., I'm not usually going to share that in the moment because I know in order to find the lesson or in order to be able to show up as something, hello, hello, I need to have processed it. And I never want to be that person on the internet going, guys, I've got this really hashtag vulnerable post that I need to share because I'll just ugly cry and you'll see snot and it just won't be attractive. And I feel like the better use of my time is to go behind closed doors, process it, and then come back and be able to share that as visibility and be able to share the lesson in that way. Energetically, that just feels much better to me. That just really works. So another thing I wanted to say in terms of visibility is how can you work to your strengths? How can you work within the rhythm of your day? How can you, I guess, work hard, but make your content, make your visibility work for you? So somebody approached me today and we had a meeting about it, about um, something that she wanted me to do as part of her channel, as part of her business. And we were discussing what kind of format we were going to capture this situation. And one thing that I said was, is there a way that we can open this up to as many people as possible and repurpose this? So I've been doing a lot of research recently. I've become a bit of a statistics person, but I have really wanted to give a lot more love back to my podcast a little bit. When I had my daughter last year, I had to take a bit of a break, but I absolutely love doing it. It's one of my favorite things to do of my week. So I was really looking at like, okay, how do I give this um, some love? And one of the things I always realize when I'm thinking in this way is And I do this with my coaching clients in terms of checking in with where they are now. It's that moment when you pull away, when you've been in a tricky parallel parking spot, when you're going to pull out, you've got to check all around. You've got to check in your mirrors. You've got to check there's not some idiot, you know, kind of trying to squeeze themselves like, oh, sorry, doing all of that. You've got to check that, you know, the handbag that you had left on the pavement, you haven't put it on the roof of the car. You've got to have that moment of having a good look round. 
And this has been sort of important in terms of me growing the podcast as well. So my have a good look round moment today was let's look at my stats. Let's look at what's really resonating. When are people listening? What time of day? Where, where are they coming from? What is the country that they're listening into? And one thing that I noticed was my stats of all of, I can't remember, can I tell you? Let me do a live behind the scenes as I'm talking to you. So today's was episode 238. So there's plenty to go around for sure. Um, what I notice is every week the stats go up of all episodes. So people are discovering them as they go back through. Now, that's really good for me to know as a content creator. And what I now do as well is I add them on YouTube. I'm working on a Pinterest strategy. So I'm going to start doing that. I flesh it out on a blog post. So do you see, I'm really, ow, I'm just spilling my tea at the same time. I'm not doing that well. Um, I am repurposing that content and I'm stretching it and bringing it to new audiences the whole time. So even though people might go, you're everywhere, it's actually the same thing, but just tweaked and shaped. Um, I often use this analogy about a potato that essentially it's the same potato, but you can just do lots of different things with it. And that's kind of how I see visibility. That's thinking about how you can just get yourself out there in different forms, but essentially you're still the same thing, but you can tweak it and roast it and shake it and mash it to whatever you need to do. So I hope that's been useful tonight. Any questions, DM me. Anyone who has missed the others, so this is day five today, um, they're all, like I was mentioning, they're all on my YouTube channel and they're all um, being changed as podcasts as well. So you can go back and, and, and listen to the other trainings on visibility. I have some lovely bonuses on my Speak Up program at the moment. So if it's the first time that you're hearing about Speak Up, um, I launched it last year. 20 women went through it and um, people have been joining since. But for the month of March, this ends on Saturday, by the way, I'm adding a complimentary 45 minute session to option one, which is when you buy the course. And then um, I have two more options. Option two, which is the course and a one on one option three course one on one and um, four weeks of email support. Um, the special offer I'm doing is you get everything in option three for the price of option two. So I feel really passionate about this. You can go and read about it on my website. Um, it's all about your messaging, getting paid for speaking, sharing your expertise, standing out in the market, becoming an expert, um, having a sort of plan. <laughs> I was getting a bit sweary then, but like having an idea of what the next steps are. So I remember in my business years ago, I used to wake up every morning and go, hmm, OK, what shall I do today? And I didn't really have a strategy. I didn't know what I was working on. And I just was faffing and that sort of, yeah, didn't help me, didn't progress. So um, if that's what maybe you're looking for as well, come on over and have a look. All the details are on the website as always and in the description box. And um, thanks so much for listening. I will catch you again tomorrow night for our final session um, together and maybe more Uncle Quentin comments. Um, if you're not a subscriber of the podcast, please subscribe and then you'll get notified when a new episode comes live, equally with my YouTube channel as well. I would love it if you subscribed and um, lots more juicy, brilliant stuff coming your way soon, including many, many episodes, um, interviews rather. So um, watch this space. All right, thanks for coming. Speak soon. Bye.